Hey everybody, welcome to Philo Dreams on NCBNTT. I'm Steve David and I'm your host. We talk football, SFA football, Southern Football Association, and I have with me the new president of the SFA and his first vice president. Um, welcome to the set, Dennis Latif. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, nice having you. And also, Alvin Ferguson, Jr., welcome to the set. Thank you, Steve. Welcome. As you know, um, recent SFA election, and the, we have the new president and vice president from that election. And we're going to hear all mm. about what their plans are, the manifesto, or what the plans are moving forward. That is big story in South football, and um, I know they're going to bring new face, new, new thoughts, uh, everything to, to make this work for us, because it's been a while since we have had a free flow of good um, organization in the, in the football region in San Fernando, or in, in South for that matter. So, Dennis, um, I'm going to put you on the spot first. Um, what are the plans? Well, first of all, um, I want to thank the Southern Fraternity of Football for having that confidence in boosting us into office. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be some very exciting times ahead. And um, according to the manifesto that we gave out, you know, one of the first things we're doing is actually ensuring our committees are put in place for the proper development and movement of football in South. Um, tonight, at our general meeting, a little later on, we will be giving out all these letters of appointment. There's still some more to be done after, but that will come pretty soon. Well, I know your first vice president is a, a mastermind on planning and, and getting football matters in gear. So I'm sure, Alvin, you're excited about the new post? Yes, I am, Steve. And um, I have been working in the background to ensure that the administration, as it relates to our new board and the respective standing committees, are in place. And a matter of fact, I've been taking a close look at the Constitution and ensuring that we're in alignment with the Constitution, but more importantly, setting operational plans to ensure that we have the shape and structure in alignment with our manifesto. Any, any plans of uh, trying to get the constitution adjusted or anything? Um, that's not going to be a long-term plan because we have been inquiring about the process. We would be looking at the constitution carefully and making the proposals to the TTFF, mm -hmm. TTFA sorry, to ensure that those changes may be considered as part of the plan going forward, within the, with, of course, within the ensuing term. Alvin, you know, um, you and, you know, not Alvin, Dennis, you and Alvin was in, and the show, and uh, we had the meeting or the, the election, and then you have a whole team, and we never got a real chance to introduce your team. You want to do that this morning or tonight? Sure, not a problem. Actually, we were trying to get one or two of them to come on the show also. Mm -hmm. um, certain commitments, so this was a kind of last minute, so mm -hmm. we just made it time. So, on. But they will be on pretty soon also. Um, we have, uh, besides Alwyn here, the first vice president, we have Mr. Eddie Dean, who is mm -hmm. owner of Club Sandu, and um, he is the second vice president. Then we have Mr. Clayton Williams. Okay, he is the um, secretary of operations. There's Morris. Right? Sorry? Clayton Morris or Williams? No, Clayton Clayton Williams. Williams. Oh, Williams. Okay. Williams, yeah. And then we have Mr. Michael Morris, who oh, is Michael the Morris. secretary of administration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, our general secretary is the is Miss um, Alex Broker. Okay, um, she has been kept on for now, and we are doing some under training, you know, with younger ones later on to take over there some of the positions. So I don't want you to think um, because we have some older heads, they're the experienced guys, and we are putting I want to say undergraduates to work with them. Mm -hmm. to take over in these positions as we go along. You know, that's one of our reasons for developing youth, mm -hmm. ways of doing it. And big guy here, Alvin, is going to set up the... 
who structured the office? Mm -hmm. the, what, what is your, your, your portfolio actually? Okay, Steve, so um, initially, mm -hmm. we saw the need for having these standing committees in place. Mm -hmm. And looking at the Constitution, it really didn't define the process in terms of how these committees should be appointed, mm -hmm. also in terms of roles and responsibilities, or general terms of reference. So what we would have done is to formulate a number of charters or terms of reference for each one of these committees. So it clearly defines mm -hmm. the process of how we appoint persons, what are the roles and responsibilities of persons in these standing, com these standing committees, and what are the deliverables, what we expect. So the expectation is that when we have all these committees up and running and have the operational plan of each one of these committees, we can then measure their performance as we go along. The intent is that when we appoint persons later tonight, um, we would meet with these committees and outline what's our vision for the committees and how they would be embedded within our plans. So generally, it's putting shape and structure into our management system. That's primarily my role. Okay. Management systems again, safety and again. That's correct. All right. Um, all in, not all, but um, Dennis, um, what challenges do you expect? Um, you know, at this point in time, there may be someone to structure. I think they may need a structure in, in teams and they're way ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, one of my um, biggest aims and goals here is to get all teams, clubs structured where they really have that way of moving, having a momentum in keeping going and, and you know, in building mm -hmm. themselves and so on. Um, we already sent out uh, people to each and every club to give us, let us know what they have, what they don't have, what their aims, objectives, do they have a ground, do they need repairs, all these things. So we, we want to find out first of all what, what they need and then we will work with them. I intend to, as I said before, I actually intend to work with them on what they don't have to help them get better. Um, but, but, you know, the, the, that's probably the main, the main um, problem I may have, and then maybe funding, but um, we are working towards that also. But you, you would not believe the response we've had in getting appointments for all of these committees. Everyone is eager, eager to, to work on, on these. And I'm told tonight, later on tonight, you will see that by, by the, everyone attending and coming forward to get the, appoint, the appointment letters. So, um, so how you did you recruit? I mean, how did you get the message out? We have in the AGM, um, we want committees or people who wants to be active come and team up with us and make it work. How, how did that happen? Well, Steve, we wrote to all the clubs, but more importantly, as Dennis indicated, we reached out to the clubs via phone calls and actually in person. Mm -hmm. We got some feedback primarily of the persons who we should target and those are the persons who we invited to participate and they actively indicated that they want to. Mm -hmm. In a matter of fact, we would actually be co-oping a number of persons who may not be directly on the committee to support the process. So for example, we see youth development being a critical part of where we want to go. And we have some big hitters on that committee, one of which is Anthony Sherwood, who has been an icon in football and an mm -hmm. icon in mm -hmm. youth football for a predominantly long period of time, supported by of course, Dwight De Leon, who is, um, is, who is on the board. So names like these, you will see littered throughout most of the committees. And of course, to ensure that we have that additional support, the committees uh, would be allowed to core persons and really make that effort stronger throughout the entire system. So um, you didn't mention Alvin Henderson. Well, of <laughs> course, he... you know, um, I, could, I could go along a long list of names of persons who we Definitely, we will have as reference. Mm -hmm. So, Alvin Henderson is one. Lennox Pilgrim is going to be one. Right. Even the past president, Mr. Richard Quanshan, he, we would be reaching out to him to ensure that we build on what was there. Right? So, there are numbers, stalwarts, and of course, inclusively yourself, Steve. Right. right. Um, I know it's been a challenge before for this SFA to financially make it or have the funding to make this work for them. They, they, I, I, I have so much 
not pity. I have so much respect for the old president and his group. Um, how are you guys going to change that, um, Dennis? Uh, well, where, you, where the sponsors coming from? In well, other words, first uh, of all, I must let you know um, we are in talks right now with two uh, footballing sponsors mm -hmm. from abroad, actually. All right? One is coming in to meet us on the 25th of this month, mm -hmm. you know, and then from there decide what they want to do. And it's all sporting clothes and uniforms and, and equipment, all right? So I hope that goes well when we finish our, our discussions. Well, both of them are the same, actually, really. Okay, one's a local one. Um, I won't reveal names right now unless, until we, we finish our discussions. But um, that's one thing. Two, there are many, many people that, that, that I know have reached out to me and actually um, I haven't gone to them yet because we were trying to organize all these committees. But we are now on the way and um, they, have, they have reached out. They have actually reached out. I haven't even called them and said, you know, anything we want, they will, they will assist. And it's both mm -hmm. um, funding and anything otherwise. So I, I do have a lot of people to call on to help us go ahead. Who's responsible for that? You, uh, Alvin? No, Dennis. Dennis is actually leading the marketing committee, uh, right? Okay. And um, while I am on the finance committee, which is just an oversight committee uh. to ensure that we have our finances in place. So Dennis is really leading that charge. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm supporting uh, with the documentation and other stuff, and also building the things that would guide that process also. So Dennis leads that charge. So that, and you have any, any issues um, putting that together, Dennis? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Yeah. Tonight, as at two, we, the um, that committee will be put together. Also, we'll be coming and get the appointments, and then we start meeting immediately. And I must let you know too. There's a couple from outside that's coming in. You know, a couple of the committees too. That's not the SFA, but willing to get in there. All right. Um, just yesterday, I had um, um, two meetings. With two two um, academies, all right, who are not in the SFA, and I've encouraged them and I've invited them tonight to so come on, you know, and um, you know we want them to be a part of this too. So we're getting more 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 members, you know, all of that, and it's gonna be growing as we go along here because they have teams, you know, and they want to play. So the media uses what word them out? Uh, uh, what other means of getting people? Most of it right now is is. Word of mouth. I mean, just actually going out mm -hmm. to meet them. Okay, find out where they are going to meet them. But pretty soon, we, as soon as this comes going place, we will be putting out some ads for other other, um, other members and every other thing that we need to. We're gonna put out all of these things tonight. We're gonna have the media there to see what is what is happening in the SFA and how we will be approaching as we go ahead. Okay, don't forget deep deep south. Um, because I haven't heard that buzzing in the deeper south area. Well, like point and okay. stuff. talking to Nesta Price and those guys, they will all be there and they will be receiving the appointments also. Or oh, the academies. And the academies. But, will, but there is Point One Civic Center, Field of Dreams, yes. um, Pitchman, the club that played last season. Yeah, yeah. Well, we reached out yeah. to Pitchman, and, um, but they have told me they, the way they work and so on, they will not be able to, but... They're willing to help out anyhow. Okay. So I have reached out to people in Deportivo, these guys. So, okay. yes, um, Field of Dreams. I don't know how come I know you're on the list and it was sent, it but I don't know how you didn't receive it. But now we'll, I'll double check that. And my apologies if you didn't, but we will definitely yeah. send it right after. You know? I just might again. not be at the AGM <laughs> but because it's late news. I um, <clears throat> notice now, but. Yes. But uh, mm -hmm. after I leave here in the studio, maybe I drive over there. Yes. With you guys to, to the AGM. Okay, good. Uh, um, so, Alwyn, uh, I know, y so your job is is coordinating the financial part of this regime. And um, any issues, having any problems? Uh, no, not, not thus far, yes. It's, again, in, as I indicated, we are really in the early stage of putting these systems in place, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, at some point in time, I have to stress test these systems to make sure that we have everything running as we expect. So as um, you look at the shape and structure of some of these committees, specific to finance, 
the finance company, the finance committee really is an oversight committee, largely to ensure that we remain compliant with all the relevant standards from accounting and accountability. And as within our manifesto, we did flag that in terms of one of the, our pillars. And um, so I'm driving that process. We actually have an accountant coming in to lead that committee, and I'm providing support as a board member to ensure that we meet that standard. As relates to, just to kind of piggyback on what um, Dennis was speaking about, we also have run in parallel in that we are reviewing our website, ensuring that we have an active website, and that should be coming along very soon, which will also be part of our marketing trust and also be part of the process for our teams to interact with us. We have actually reached out to the, the mayor of San Fernando to ensure that we could be considered for an mm -hmm. office at Skinner Park which will be the Office of the Secretariat, which will be a central point of communication or hub of communication for the association. So these are some of the things that are happening in the background. With the expectation is that we should be able to complete that within the shortest possible time so that we can reach all angles, all corners of the zone. And again, the plan is to move into the zone, so we may be moving that general meeting, not from <coughs> core San Fernando, but as we look for our home, we may be taking it to Point Fortin, or even to deeper south, Sapari and otherwise, where we have adequate venues to meet the teams and communicate the teams in general. So that's been one of our strategies going forward also. So, but you want to keep it centrally located. Right. But um, bearing in mind, we, we don't have a home right. for the, the, the SFA's office thus far. So we have been looking at areas, and I said we didn't approach the, minister, the um, mayor yeah. of San Fernando right. to aid us in that process. And we are waiting his response. And, and SFA, San Fernando is the home of SFA. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we got to kind of maintain that tradition, right. I would think. Yes. Everybody, when you say SFA, they're talking Skinner Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that would be the perfect spot for it. Mm -hmm. At least you, you're getting some, some of the old stuff back. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so. Um, so I know there's, there's going to be a new season and I know you guys have something planned in the planning for that. And maybe you don't want to leak that out yet? Or are you interested in giving us some ideas on, on that? No, well, well, no it's, um, well we, we are trying to get um, Skinner Park. Let me give you a, a time to think about that because I have to okay. take a break. No problem. We'll and when we come back, we'll, we'll pick it up, all right? We'll do. The viewers will be right back after the short break. Rajwanti Bullock. I am the curator of the Mudhouse Museum. What we have here is a history of a building that is 135 years old. Hi, join us for your movie classics on NCBN TT Television Network every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. with repeats on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. NCBN Television, the number one online television network, bringing you the classics.
Okay, welcome back, viewers. For the ones who are not tuning in, you're looking at uh, Feel of Dreams and NCBNTT. And I'm Steve David, your host. And with me is Dennis Latif, who is the new president of the Southern Football Association, and Olin Ferguson Jr., who is the first vice president. Okay, Dennis, you were telling us before the break. Yeah, so we, we plan to have our opening either the last Sunday in, um, in June or the first Sunday in July, which every day we get, we have applied for Skinner Park. And um, on that day, we plan to have a parade of teams with a cultural um, show and uh, an exhibition game. Okay. Okay. So that's the plan for the start They're of our open, season. Yeah. Um, yeah. On top of that, we are also seeing how best, um, you know, we are finalizing our budget and so on, you know, which will include trying to assist teams and everything else as it goes along. What kind of budget you, you guys anticipate on? Uh, that's a, a good um, question, Steve. Um, we are actually looking to plan not just for the year, but look to take us through <coughs> for, you know, a three-year plan. And I could comfortably tell you that, that budget has gone in excess of a million dollars, really because we try to incorporate every aspect of football. It might be a big wish list, but again, with an operation plan, we're gonna work with it, of course, incrementally. But we're looking at roughly a three-year plan that will guide us through the process in terms of how we manage not just the actual competition, but development of players, development of clubs, right? And of course, exposure of clubs to ensure that we have that developmental process throughout the clubs. And Provide them with the opportunity to earn revenue from the from the whole aspect of football, as we mentioned, as part of our manifesto. How you plan to earn revenue? Great. So um, most of the grounds that we have are not secure grounds. <clears throat> the intent is that with the various stadiums that would be available as time goes along, because we know there should be some upgrade of stadia in preparation of the Commonwealth Youth Games, we would utilize some of these stadiums when we have some of the premier matches. However, um, taking it back to grassroots, the intention is that clubs must build systems around the football that they become income earners. Some of the small vendors around, right, soft drink stands, etc. We will promote that <coughs> through training and development of the club representatives so that they are able to, to use that opportunity to build their clubs in that process. Dennis, any difficulties in getting fields to kick off your inaugural season? Yes, that's one of our biggest uh, problems though. Um, most of the fields are really not football with you right now. Um, <clears throat> but we are trying to, to get it going. We have cleared Faisabad, okay, and we're working towards that. Forest Reserve, well, it wouldn't be ready for this year, but that's already been cleared and so on to be graded and sorted mm -hmm. out. And hopefully by next year we have that going. Um, I visited Koki ground on Saturday. All right, there's some work to be done there, grading and filling and so on. And uh, we're hoping that we can do that pretty soon. Um, I'm having a meeting there today. Um, I said we're trying to get Garakara Park. It yeah, has been cut and everything and so on, but it's certainly to be graded properly and so on. Um, but other grounds that are there, we will be visiting uh, um, pretty soon. We are actually putting together a grounds committee also to help with that. And um, they will be visiting the grounds. We, we've already made up a chart, everything, and, you know, a, a checklist on it. And everybody will come back with the checklist done and then we take it from there, see what it needs and to operate and try and get those grounds going as quickly as possible. But if we're picking out grounds from different locations, we're kind of going away from from our plan that there's going to be community and the support from the community. Like Point Ford and Civic Center, the support from Point. Or Pitchman, the support from Bray. So if we go to Kokia, what we don't have a, a team in Kokia. No, no, we have teams in our own San Fernando too. Remember that? It's just look at the different grounds that's mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not sure about Skinner Park. So we are looking for what there is 
Mr. you know, General. nearby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what it is. No, no, we have a library. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the grounds that are pretty good. But we look at all different grounds. We are looking at the, the teams where they're situated also, and what grounds are available so that we can play games there, when, as they say, in the communities. They like point forward, we have grounds down there. We have your ground, we have, everybody, you know, Field of Dreams and so on, and we, we, we will be using those areas. So I'm just looking at all the others, as I said, you know, the more we get, the mm -hmm. merrier for everyone and so on. Are we planning, Alvin, on um, adding some new teams to the seven for Yeah, um, and interestingly, Steve, as we discuss, mm -hmm. we're reaching out to all teams to get them back into the SFA. Mm -hmm. And um, even the <clears throat> teams that have youth teams only. So one of our initial plans is to have a parallel youth league that should conclude mm -hmm. around about August or so. It's going to be short and tight because a number of the youth players go into their college teams in August. So that's one of the, the pillars that we're looking at. But then we're actually reaching out to all teams that were previously registered under the SFA. And similarly, we're working along to ensure that we bring these teams back. So for example, I am meeting with a number of teams from the area from Separia to Erin. One of the teams that I recognize teams that is not participating at this point in time is Separia Spurs. They probably won the SFA a couple of times in years gone by. Mm -hmm. They are the early stages of restarting their program. So they are launching an academy in Saparia on the 3rd mm -hmm. of June. So we would be supporting that cause to get those clubs back into the SFA and help build to the level that they will, will, they will, will that, that they will at some point in time. Mm -hmm. you know? So we're actually doing that sort of work on the ground also. You guys are going to be threading new grounds. And I mean, when I say new grounds, so to speak, with, with all... You, you're going to have a lot of new teams coming on board, or, or potentially. And also, you're going into the youth program. So no fears that that might be difficult to achieve? Well, well let me just um, tell you also, we're looking at a women's league. And a women's league. Add, awesome. add that to the, the question. Yes. So no fears that... Um, no, no, no fears we at might all. might be biting off too much. Yeah, no fears at all. You know, the people we have in all these committees are committed. They are showing, they are showing their commitment. And with people like that, I'm telling somebody, once they have the proper backing from us, you know, which we intend to give, I don't see, I don't see any fear. Mm -hmm. And, well, how we plan to... I know we're struggling for fields already. And the rain is, is another issue that we had last year. Mm -hmm. How we plan to, to accommodate all this football in this short space in mm -hmm. your first year with youth football, women football, SFA, and, and we're still struggling for grounds. And that's what I was telling you. I was trying to go to all these other grounds to mm -hmm. see what's available, what we can do as quickly as possible. Okay. So anything that we can get going, you know, quicker than normal, that, right. you know, we will be work on those wrongs first and get it going. All right. Potentially, uh, we have a, a start date for our league. Yeah, um, as Dennis indicated, looking between the last weekend in June, the first weekend in July, um, we have indicated that um, 16 teams have indicated us that they're interested in playing. Tonight will actually mm -hmm. give us a better idea who the teams that actually would play. And um, that will then determine how the structure of the competition will be like. Obviously, with 16 teams, it should be two groups zoned. And of course, we then move into a playoff type arrangement. But we have uh, competitions and tournaments committee that will fine tune all that and present their plan at a later date. That's our target. So, our South Zone football, we're talking about the top group. They're going to have about 16 of those? 16 teams, teams have indicated their interest to play. Wow. And um, with our successful negotiation coming on later this week, I would expect that all 16 teams would participate because the intent is to support those teams via some level mm -hmm. of sponsorship or something that we would roll out later on. But again, we want to hold back mm -hmm. on those plans till we and finalize the arrangements. And there are still six more teams that uh, they, um, they will let us know a little later if they will take part, Where, which I'm trying to get them to take part. So in total, you can look at probably 22 teams taking part. Well, if you can swing that, that would be the biggest 
thing after sledge bread, man. Um, I hope they do it. Yeah. And and how long is the season gonna last? Well, as I said, we um we have the tournaments and and and, com and competitions committee fine tuning that. Mm -hmm. The intent is that we want to ensure that football ends before the end of the year, right? Um, of course, with the luxury of having additional grounds, we can spread the football over a period of time. That is that will allow us to achieve that. But really, for now, I think that when that competition and tournament committee rules out with their plans, right, we would release it in society. But mm -hmm. we are early stages in that. But that's what we are mm -hmm. forecasting to ensure that we have football concluded by the end of the year. Of course, which will be concluded by a grand presentation, at, you know, at a venue to be announced. That's that's what we work in towards. Sounds like SFA East, West, North, and South in different groups, like a work. Is that how we plan to do it? If, 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 if the teams all come on board, that's how we probably need to do it, to accommodate all teams. To accommodate it's everybody a good playing. competition, yes. Mm -hmm. That'd be brilliant if we can get that many teams playing in the South Zone. Mm -hmm. um, but people is say things, but when it's time to put up, they shut up. Well, you know, I have a feeling this um, meeting tonight, uh -huh. the GM tonight, will indicate their interest in, get, in going ahead. All right. So we, we are expecting a full house. All right. So, so we, we have a potential 16 teams. What is the minimum amount of teams you want to have so you can start going forward? Well, um, obviously, we, we don't want to get, we, want, we would like to have more teams than we had last year. That's more than eight. Right? And what one ten? would expect that 10 should be what we should target at a minimum. But based upon the response, as indicated, we would have at least 16 teams. So you actually have all 10 teams that from last year, you have them on board Concord, already? Yeah. Okay. So you at least... And if you have 10 teams, then what we do, we're going to split that in, in two groups, or we're we going to just continue with one big group? Similarly, I think we would go with two groups, right? Again, for the luxury of having teams play within their zone and minimize costs in terms mm -hmm. of transport. But we will look at it carefully to see how best the competition could be structured. Um, just to give some indication also, too, um, the process is that when we have teams duly registered, we need to feed that into a database of the TTFA. Mm -hmm. that then generates right, how the competition will be structured on our advice. So mm -hmm. we still are guided by what TTFA will want in terms of the mandate for football. So we're now working independent of that and staying within the confines of what the TTFA will have aligned nationally. Right. And is, is TTFA, uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, are they heavily involved in in your planning or have you reached out to them already and give them any ideas and what your plans are? Well, I, I reached out and um, I'm waiting to meet with them. They said they have made a, a list to meet. So as soon as they get a chance, they'll meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm waiting on them ready to meet with us so we can lay out everything to them. Um, but then that we, we did send them um, um, correspondence about the meeting tonight and if they would like to send a rep at the meeting right. so they will know of the plans also uh, because I mean we have um, we have SFA this is the only league I know about I don't know about any other Central Football League or Portsmouth Football League or Eastern Football League do you and and if if they do do we plan to have some kind of interleague football, or is that up to the TTFA? Well, if I'm just jumping there, I, yes, at this point in time, um, the SFA is the only active zone. Um, hopefully, the other zones will come on board because we want to focus be the trendsetter in that regards. But we have been also looking at the possibility of having a zonal team to represent the zone in a number of exhibition matches. We already have one tart table um, in Mayaro. Mayaro has recently um, commissioned lights on their ground. So the intent is that um, as soon as our league gets into full steam ahead, we would be looking um, through our technical and development and training committee, a selection of an elite 
SFA team to participate in a number of exhibition matches so that we would have active football from a zonal level or inter-zonal level, right? More in the perspective of exhibition matches, possibly against national teams, if so afforded the opportunity, until the other zones come on board. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, but, so for your opening, your big grand opening with all the match pass and everything else, where's that going to happen at Skinopar? Skinopar, that's where we're now. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. As yeah. we've applied for it, as the dates mentioned, and we're just waiting for feedback. I don't know if, I, I've heard there's going to be no football in Skinner Park. Again, word in the street. Is that, did you hear the same, or did you, or you guys know a little bit more than I do? Well, the word on the street is that, but uh, our intent is to continue to have that conversation with the mayor um, so that it becomes a reality, right? Um, there are some technical issues around the field at, um, surrounding the field at Skinner Park, mm -hmm. um, but our team, that's the tournaments and competition committee, is reviewing that and to provide proposals that will ensure that we are able to play football at Skinner Park if we're given the opportunity. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Dennis, have you reached out to the people that you defeated um, to join the team and move forward with you? Well, they will be at the AGM tonight, mm -hmm. at the AGM tonight, sorry, general meeting, and um, I will be talking to them then. I have not a chance to, remember when um, this thing first happened, the next morning I, I left the country. Right. I was away for 11 days. So coming back, we just got together quickly. This is our third week here. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, I am going to um, speak to Brian, you know, and um, hopefully tonight it is. And, um, but we have one to one, two emails and so on. And, um, but tonight I will definitely meet with him. Right, uh, because I had him in this show here and said after the election, they're willing to, to move forward with whoever wins, whether they won or yeah, as I, I just wasn't here, mostly really, yeah. and we were just okay. trying to make sure all this was organized for the, for the meeting tomorrow. But um, we will be definitely having a good meetings with him. Okay, um, let's take a break. When we come back, we will pick up where we left off, all right? Viewers, we'll be right back after the short break. George, I can't see that timing at all. From a place where only a big people and pretty girl everywhere, yeah. I know life be tough, but we still a smile on we face, yeah. No matter how hard, man, we don't let tragedy face, way. We could take strain, that's why when we fest it, we just bed God when we jamming. We just jam down when we drinking, man, it's strong rum, eh. Pop my bottle right now when we fest it, we just bed God when we jamming. We just jam down when we drinking, man, it's strong rum, eh. Pop my bottle. Push up your hand, eh. We see my this bad, push up your hand. Change on TV to the sun, we better stay calm, be cool.
Okay, welcome back, viewers. All right, uh, Dennis and Olman. Um, things, it sounds like you have everything running smoothly. Is it really? Or are you having challenges with anything? Well, Steve, um, I said it's, it's <clears throat> very early days, right? And of course, it's a lot of work. Um, but we have been working actually night and day. And I would say between Dennis and myself, exchanging emails late at night, phone calls, etc. cetera. Um, so the initial challenge is really devoting the kind of time as individuals, uh, because bear in mind, we both have professional careers. So I think the initial challenge is how do we balance that time? Um, we have been finding innovative ways to get things done as a board. Um, we had multiple meetings, and now we're expanding that leadership to the committees. The expectation is the committees will work, act, work and work actively to bring the vision of all our clubs into reality. So at the early stage, yes, the challenge is getting people to commit and commit their time. Their time. Um, and it is, I, as I had indicated, um, we're setting some performance targets to these committees, and the expectation is that we want to keep the standard as high as possible. And also to reach out to other teams, or all the teams, in a matter of fact, to support that cause by having their personnel be part of the committees or be co-opted under the committees. So with more hands on deck, our dream and the dream of all the teams would be a reality. So for now, I think the, the major hurdle that we would have as an, a board is really finding and creating that time and getting persons on board to deliver our mandate. That's primarily, I think, the initial thing that I would flag. I think you have a common denominator in Alex Broker, who has been there for a long time. She knows ins and outs and every, everything about it. So that's a help, um, of course, to move forward. But... How are you going to have your meetings right now? Zoom? Or you guys get together as a group? How do you get these committees? Because these people are from all different locations. Right. So, so, I, um, so what, we, what, we, what we have been doing thus far mm -hmm. is that we had a cross-section of in-person meetings. We had a virtual meetings also as board. Um, on all the committees, we have a board member on all the committees as mm -hmm. mandated by the Constitution. We set and train some basic guidelines. The committees must meet at least once per month. They must submit some <coughs> reports to us once mm -hmm. per month that will form part of the reporting system to the general council and also to the board. The expectation is that those chairpersons will lead the, the charge in terms of how they meet, but ensure that they remain compliant in terms of the terms of reference. Um, of course, the technology today affords meeting at any time because, again, one could sit in their, their living room, their bedroom, and use the virtual platform, and we encourage that. Mm -hmm. We also would have some of the committees that must meet in person. So, for example, the tournaments and committees meeting, they have to go and do ground inspections, they have to recommend mm -hmm. to us that the grounds that are available and the grounds that are not available and what is required for us to assist to get those grounds playable. So it's going to be a combination of stuff. And we're going to provide that oversight. I think for some, in some part of the initial stage to provide support, both Dennis and myself would be sitting in on these committees to guide and assist the process. So there's going to be a seamless approach as information coming into the board for us to ensure that our plans roll out as we expect it to. So if I am watching the show, sitting at home watching the show, and how I am enthusiastic about getting on board to help, do you welcome these, these type of people and how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, um, so again, we, we are not just ex um, having mm -hmm. members of clubs, but we open to the general public, as to say. Um, Alex broke up our secretary. Uh -huh. She is the source of all, where all that information is feeds into. But persons looking at this program, we invite them to attend our general meeting tonight which is going to be held at the aquarium restaurant tonight at 6.30 p.m. They can, can come down, um, make the necessary contact in person. Um, however, we also would have our website up and running very soon, and that is going to be the hub of our formal communication. And that's primarily what we're going to, we will do in terms of ensure that we're out there to the public and we are accessible to the public. So those are already, for now, is going to be in person. 
And as we move along, we would use that virtual platform through our website with all our contacts, all our points where persons can reach out to us and even interact with us online. So that's, that's our intent. Where's the aquarium restaurant? I never heard of that. Cook. Where is it? Cookie? Wrong about, wrong about, just Cookie. It's on the left hand. Just right on the left hand side. Uh, okay. It's been there umpteen years. And, um, but uh, it's not hard to find. Yeah, I am a point, um, country boy. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I stay in the country. <laughs> I don't go nowhere. But um, yeah. yeah, when we leave, you can follow us and we, we, we leave we, you there. We get there. All right. um, but for the election, it was at Atobolan. Why can we not use Atobolan for the AGM? For Manny Ramjan. I mean, Manny Ramjan, yeah. sorry. Um, the offices that we use for the AGM. Mm -hmm. um, is really assigned to the Special Olympics Committee. Okay. Right? And um, they allowed us, or allowed the SFA mm -hmm. then, the use of the facility. So we are still in the process of negotiating with them to have a space. But bear in mind that I, I did indicate that we are really having that ongoing conversation with the mayor to find some home for the SFA and have it soon. Mm -hmm. Right? So the part we are also looking parallel to, to having a space at Mani Ramchon. But bearing in mind also that Manny Ramjan may be undergoing some repairs in preparation for the yeah. um, Commonwealth Junior Games. Yeah, right. but, but, but also it's, um, as, as you saw for yourself, it may be a little too small for some of these meetings. And we think tonight it was have been a little too small also. It, it is. That was a good problem to have, though. You have, I've never seen that much people at an uh, <laughs> SFA AGM. Mm -hmm. so that I think it's going to be more tonight. So then reach out to TTFA to chip in. I mean, yeah. they're the main body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, I've, I've tried. I've given her a call, and I'm on a waiting list to meet with them. Right. They said, as soon as they get time, they'll call me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, it would be very important <laughs> for them to be part of this because yeah. they have all always, and I can't say that with, with a straight face because I'm not quite sure, but I don't think the assistant that the leagues or the need, they get it from, yeah. from the main body, which is TTFA. Yeah. So you guys have to strut this stuff and make sure that you get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, as I said, you know, reach out to them, but there's not a weekend list. Well, if you keep waiting. <laughs> well, I, I call again this yeah. week and I can show you the response. Yeah. <laughs> Bang on the door. <laughs> so I do Are you guys there? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we need help. We need help yeah. in South. We need help. We need help in the whole country. Yeah. But our zone is a South zone. So if we, if we can build this and other people can build off of that, then we can get, we might have interleague football playing sooner uh, or than later. And that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I have very much confidence in you guys making this thing happen. And I am going to push. To, on, I'm going to stay on top of you guys and make sure you guys push this to make it happen. Because I want, it, uh, do, I want you to walk your talk. So I believe we regularly um, communicating with the press. You're going to see everything out there. And as I said, this is transparent, and everyone's going to see what's happening in South. And, and you're going to hear from me, Dennis? Hey, Dennis, A what are you doing? pleasure to hear from you anytime. Time. All right, okay. And any you, advice you, given, we shall be taken. No, because I, I, we, I really do want to see the South Football Association, and somewhere down mm -hmm. the road, we get a SFL like we used to have back in the day. Mm. Instead of having you so many teams and if you can break it now into two leagues sfl yeah. sfa that would be a way to go yeah and somebody else can run the sfl and you run the sfa and and then of course dennis and um, somewhere you and alvin of course somewhere start to move up the chain <laughs> to bigger things i thank you for that <laughs> but i know this is what we at here now yeah. all right so um, finan financially, we stable, or we we gonna be stable, potentially be stable because we have a couple of people who might be interested in helping us out. 
we, we're not really financially stable as yet, but um, we intend to get there. We intend pretty soon too. Right. I know there's a lot of help coming on, you know. I've already um, reached out to quite a few people who promised, and um, we will get there. Okay, and I am being devil's advocate now. Resources, we we pretty much on the ball with the fails and stuff, and the different things like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, see, what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. is get all the teams stable first. That way I can approach and say, listen, it's a, it's a favorite of the friends. This is what we have. This is what we want to do to keep going and so on, so we can show them the improvements that they need. And whatever comes in to us, we are going to show them where that has gone. So okay. they can see what's happening. I think that th something that nobody thinks about, and then when the time comes, we, mm -hmm. it messes up the football, is our referee pool. Um, is that in gear? And, uh, or are we going to train referees or have them update the certification? Because a lot of them, referees, they sit at home and wait for a call to go and make $300 in a weekend mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So, let, let me respond to that. Steve. Okay. Um, so we have a referees department um, that's been led by Mr. Wayne Caesar, um, mm -hmm. who would be receiving his letter of appointment tonight also. Um, of course, Wayne is a stalwart when it comes to the refereeing and administration of the game. Um, he's going to be supported by one of the past executives, Mr. Howard Spencer. And we're bringing a few other younger persons on boards who they could nurture to into the process. So they will have the oversight as it relates to referees. Um, and mm -hmm. liaison, of course, with the referees association to ensure that we have referees available. And they also are mandated with the, the, with the key aspect of when we have referees on boards so that the referees remain compliant with a minimum standard and ensure that the referees are active in terms of continuous improvement in terms of Governing okay. and controlling and, and mm -hmm. the game and applying the laws of the game in its correct sense. Mm -hmm. So that committee is going to be entrusted with that responsibility. So, so we have that um, kind of pretty much. Yes. Don't plan. Now, is to, what about fails? Do we have requirements out there for this is what you feel needs to be to qualify? Yeah. So um, likewise, tournaments and competitions committee. Some of the initial work that they are doing is site visits. We have a structured checklist system that will grade the grounds in terms of its standard, see where the gaps are, and of course we will either one have the respective teams who control these grounds um, be highlighted. What are the conditions that are not acceptable, and find a process where we can assist the clubs. Right. So if it's lobbying for support to sponsorship or to the respective regional corporations to provide the support to have the grounds, the community grounds ready for football. Yeah. Now, who is the whip for all these committees? Um, yeah, I say the whip is to make sure these committees are working and they, so, and they are mm -hmm. on board. So the president has ex officio rights on all the committees. Mm -hmm. So inadvertently, he, has, he, has, he carries the oversight and the burden of it. But of course, with any superhero, he needs a good, a good partner, and I am providing that support for him. Yes. Right? right. Because, as, as I mentioned earlier, I would have structured all these charters, and the intent is to manage those charters and see the deliverables as expected, on, as aligned with these charters, and provide the president with the information so he has the whip. Right? That's, what I, that's the intent. Yeah. yeah. On top of each committee also has a chairman, mm -hmm. so they will be presenting back to us. As we go along, I know, um, and it sounds very easy for for things to happen. But when it comes to people, we all have something to do, somewhere to go, and then things get f fall behind. Um, June is around the corner. That's not far. No. And, and we have to be moving because I'm saying this because I want to see football go in the Southland, mm -hmm. in Trinidad, but in Southland especially. So I, I want you guys to be on the P's and Q's mm -hmm. and run, run as hard as you can mm -hmm. to make yeah. it successful and the best way to know how. Yeah, that, that's why we, we've um, come up with this um, general meeting as soon as possible here. 
all the team, they have everybody coming there today to get the appointments and to start working immediately. So um, the mandates are going to be given out tonight. This is where we are going to start, so everything has to be in place before time, not on time, but before time, so Good. that we yes. will be. When they come, everything is, is in place. Right. And, and you're working in sponsorships, you're working on, and, and, you know, committees, different mm -hmm. things, making it happen. All right, um, I've got a couple more minutes before we end. Any pardon words for both of you? Steve, I, first, I want to really reach out to all the clubs that supported us um, to ensure that we were elected. Even the clubs that didn't support us, we reach out to everyone. We know that um, the elections is over, mm -hmm. and we invite all clubs to be part of this process to really move football in the south mm -hmm. back to the pinnacle it was many years ago. Right. Um, we also want to encourage clubs to grasp on the opportunity to develop the human resource that support the clubs, mm -hmm. in which we would be providing that support also so that clubs could see the importance of being self-sufficient and also looking at opportunities where they can generate some sort of income to support their efforts. But key to the process is that we want people on the football fields move away from the streets, move away from crime, move away from the negative of society, get onto mm -hmm. the football field and express yourself within the whole ambit of the laws of the game or the beautiful game that we call football. Good. Yeah. 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 Anything? Uh, and you, Steve, I just want to say that we are going to show them there is some way to go. Right. It is not just come out as we want, but we're working towards some way. It is going to lead us to where we want to go. Elite football, better education, better development to everyone. All right, I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, Alwyn, thank you so much. Thank you. Steve. Your father will be proud of you, son. Thank and you. Um, and keep pushing forward and keep pushing Dennis to do as good as he's been doing and even better. Because thank it's good Steve. to have yeah. people like you on board as well, Dennis. And good luck moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. Um, again, it becomes in Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Um, NCBNTT, thanks for the opportunity. We also have a Facebook page and we have an email address, philadelphiantt at gmail.com, where you can drop us a line. This show has ended. Go in peace. I'm Steve David. Good night.